Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of all of the new artifact weapons that were shown off in the BlizzCon artifact preview. Bear in mind that there are way more variants of each weapon than we see here, but this is going to cover the base artifact for every class. Starting off with the Demon Hunter, Vengeance Spec, and the Aldrachi Warblades. As far as the lore goes, these were the blades of the Champion of the Aldrachi people, a now extinct group who were killed for refusing to serve the Legion. These blades were then given to a demon hunter by Kil'jaeden, because the demon hunter decided to switch sides and serve Kil'jaeden, and I presume we kill that demon hunter and claim these blades. I love the look of these weapons, especially considering how Vengeance is the demon hunter DPS spec. I think they're big, they're chunky, they're very sharp, they're just wicked and vicious looking. And there's definitely a lot to work with with their overall silhouette, so while the default version looks brilliant, I'm sure they'll be able to do some really cool stuff with these. Next, we have the Twin Blades of the Deceiver for the Havoc spec. So Havoc Demon Hunters are going to be using the Twin Blades of the Deceiver, a pair of glaives that were infused with Kil'jaeden's power when their owner submitted to the demon within him. Lovely stuff, and honestly, I am not that keen in these whatsoever. I think both versions look really bland, really dull, and I'm not that interested. Of course, there are many different variations, we haven't seen them all, so hopefully some of those will be good. Next, it's time for the Death Knights, and we'll be starting off with the Maw of the Damned. This massive thousand-year-old Legion-forged axe is the Blood Death Knight option. Forged out of life-stealing metal, it's a great complement to the theme of the spec. Visually, I think this is an absolute winner in um, both of the states that they showed. Since this was shown at Gamescom, we do know a few more variants of it, and I've got to say, just overall, this is a standout weapon, and hopefully it's red color will inspire some DKs to mog something that isn't just the regular blue. Next, we have Icebringer and Frost Reaper. Forged from the shards of Frostborn, these twin blades are going to serve as the artifact weapon of Frost Death Knights. And I do like the visuals, I, I just don't think they stand out a massive amount in really either of their forms. I think they suffer from not having some of the large silhouette accents that Frostmourne did with its big skull and things like that. Still, there is definitely potential for the alternate versions of these weapons, but right now, it's pretty average. Next, we have Apocalypse. Unholy Death Knights will be wielding this giant vampiric Nethrazine blade. Originally claimed by Servants of Medivh and hidden under Karazhan, it will now serve players during Legion, and wow, just what a weapon. I think both versions of this sword look absolutely fantastic. Massive and imposing, but with that really cool plague blight seeping through the metal, and again, a particularly vicious silhouette, which I absolutely love. It's also great how the hilt is slightly reminiscent of the corrupted Ashbringer. Overall, this is just a very strong offering, and one of my favorite overall weapons. Next, it's time for the Druids, starting off with the Scythe of Elune for Balanced Druids. Yep, this is the Scythe that was responsible for much of the Worgen plight. It certainly looks nice, but honestly, it doesn't blow me away. I mean, it's going to fit with loads of specs, and I do like Scythes a lot in general, so I suppose I just hope that some of the variants are a little bit more impressive. It's pretty, it absolutely serves its purpose, big thumbs up, it's just not blowing me away. Next, we've got the Fangs of Ashmane for Feral Druids, and these quite literally are the Fangs of Ashmane, a demigod who perished during the War of the Ancients. The actual daggers are quite okay looking, but the real star of the show is what they do to your cat form. I think Druids are in for a real treat with this one. I think the modified cat form looks absolutely wonderful, and I definitely hope that we see further tweaks to cat form with the other variants of these daggers. In a similar vein, we have the Claws of Ursoc for Guardian Druids. Ursoc was one of the many demigods who died during the War of the Ancients, and we're going to be using his claws. The claws themselves look absolutely fantastic. I, I really like how they've got this kind of almost fire kind of rage like going through them. But of course, the real star is what this is going to do to your bear form transformation. While it doesn't do as much for me as the cat form transformation, I still think it's great. And again, hopefully we see some really cool variations as well. And then for restoration, you'll be using Gahanir, the mother tree. This annoying to pronounce staff is the branch of the first tree, literally the first tree, uh, gifted to mortals by the demigod Aviana. Both forms are, I think, really cool, and I can see it going with a lot of sets. I especially like the alternate version that they showed. Overall, I think this is a very solid addition, though I suspect my druid will still be mogging the level 20 quest staff. Next, we've got Hunters, which are my main class, and starting off with Beast Mastery, who are going to be using Titan Strike, a gun designed by the Titan Watcher Mimiron and empowered with a relic called the Thunderspark. 
Overall, I think this is really, really nice. But nice is about as far as it goes. I'm kind of struggling to see how this is going to work in with some of the more traditional hunter sets and themes. I hope there's something maybe a bit more earthy available in the variants of this weapon. Next, we've got Thastara Legacy of the Windrunners, which is going to be used by Marksmanship Hunters. As far as the lore goes, this is the family heirloom of the Windrunner family, and it was last wielded by Illyria, which is hinting at her return, and we will probably find a way to get that off her somehow, hopefully not via her death. Overall, I like this bow a lot. We've seen more variations of it because it was displayed at Gamescom, and I think overall, this is just looking really nice, and I especially like the Blood Elf-styled one that they showcased on the website. Next up, Survival, and Survival Hunters are going to be using Taloncaw, a spear from the High Mountain Torn that is blessed by ancient animal spirits. I really like the look of this weapon, I think both versions are quite different from each other, which is nice, and one of the versions has its head being, well, the head of a wolf made of metal. That is extremely cool looking, and overall I think this is a great weapon for a spec that I cannot wait to try. Next up, Mages, starting with Arcane and Aluneth, great staff of the Magna. This is apparently the staff that was wielded by Aegwyn, who was, of course, one of the most powerful beings on the planet, and I think it is a visual treat. Really, really nice looking, and I think both versions are very vibrant and flashy, and I especially like the purple variant that I can see going pretty well with that Hellfire Citadel LFR cloth set. There's actually quite a few transmog options that look good with what they've shown for this staff. Next up, we've got Philo Malorn, which is the fire weapon. This was the sword of Kilfas. It was, in fact, an ancient family heirloom that goes all the way back to the War of the Ancients, and the variations that they showed off are both very different, with one almost looking like a rune blade. I much prefer the Blood Elf-styled one. I think it's got that very sort of vicious slicing curve that I'm a big fan of, and I really like the detail on the hilt as well. Plus, it does have a degree of elegance to it, which is very nice. And finally, for the mages, we have Ebonchill, which is going to be used by Frost. It was the staff of the first guardian of Tirasfall, and here we see quite a few variations, and I think they all look pretty solid. Not a great deal else to say, though. It's not blowing me away, I just think it's a particularly solid option. Next up, Monks, and Brewmasters are going to be using Fuzan, the Wanderer's Companion. This staff was the walking stick of the Watcher Freya that was then passed down to Yulon, who eventually gave it to the Monkey King. I really love the look of this weapon, but I am kind of partial to the Pandaren art style anyway. It doesn't feel terribly unique though, which is a little bit of an issue, but certainly it's a weapon that's going to blend in very well with the monk look, and I do think it's very nice. Mistweavers are going to be using Shilun, Staff of the Mists. This was the staff of Xiao Hao, the last emperor of Pandaria. Overall, it's a very nice looking weapon with a strong theme. The colors are perhaps too muted for my liking, but it certainly is a nice weapon, and I'm keen to see what the alternate versions do with the color palette and the bell that this weapon has. Finally, we've got the Fists of the Heavens, which are going to be used by Windwalker Monks. They are a pair of hand blades that were crafted by a Tolvier Smith and then imbued with the power of Alakir. Both variants are really awesome looking, I think, and really different to each other. I especially like the swirling vortex detail in the blue version, that's really cool. Next up, Paladins, and I think Paladins overall have got a very strong showing. So Holy are going to be using the Silver Hand, a weapon wielded by Tyr. According to the lore, Tyr died during a plot to expose Loken's treachery. That's new lore, and it's very strange they've unveiled the fact that Tyr is dead here on this website. But regardless, the weapon looks bloody fantastic, especially the regular version, which just screams Paladin. Um, of course, being a holy paladin, you're not going to be hitting much with it, but still, it absolutely looks brilliant, and, uh, well, I'm a little bit more interested to level my paladin up now. Next, we have Truth Guard, which is going to be used by Protection. This is an epic shield that was given to a Vrykul champion by Tyr in order to help him expose Loken. This Vrykul later migrated to Stormheim, where I presume we're going to be able to get a copy of the shield for ourselves. Given their size, shields really have the potential to look quite epic, and I think both combinations of this sword and board look brilliant, sporting very strong titan and very strong paladin elements that are going to look great with many mog sets. And finally, for retribution, we've got the Ashbringer, a sword which really needs no introduction, being one of the most iconic weapons in the Warcraft universe. It looks as epic as ever, though the need for us to nab it off Tyrion is maybe a bit questionable. We have seen many different versions of this two-handed sword so far with the Legion marketing, and I think all of them have a lot of variety. I think it's safe to say that Rat Paladins are in for a real treat. 
with Legion. Let's move on to the priest, starting off with Light's Wrath, which is going to be used by Discipline. This was intended to be a second Ashbringer by the Scarlet Crusade, but the machinations of a Nethrazim ended up with it exploding in a magical explosion, it was then swooped up by the Kirintor who locked it away for safekeeping. It looks very priestly and very nice, and I think the white version of it is going to look great with a lot of Mog sets, so I'm definitely keen on it. Um, I don't think it's perhaps blowing me away in a sort of crazy and unique manner, but it's definitely a solid weapon. Holy are going to be using Tour, Beacon of the Naru. Tour was a crystal that the Naru used to protect the Draenei during their initial exodus from Argus. Lost since then, priests are going to be using this as their holy artifact weapon. Both variants of this have me seriously impressed. The blue version is beautiful and vibrant with very, very strong color work, and the yellow and black variant has this really interesting mix of light and dark elements so that it almost looks like it's in conflict with itself. This is seriously impressive to me, and I can imagine so many great, um, just great variants of this based on the lore and based on what they've showed us already. And finally, for Shadow Priests, we've got Zalatath, Blade of the Black Empire. This void energy weapon is crafted from the claw of an old god. Sounds a little bit risky. It was hidden away by dark priests for eons, and finally we're going to be whipping it out and giving it to the shadow priests. It's certainly something that fits the spec anyway. Um, of both the versions, I like the one that looks more like a traditional sword. There's something very sleek and slicey about it, which feels very violent and bloody. As for the old godish version, I'm less keen on that. It feels a little bit generic Siege of Orgrimmar yogg Saronish. Next, we've got Rogues, starting off with Assassination, who will be using Anguish and Sorrow, the Daggers of Garona. The actual Garona, not the Warlord's one. I'm a big fan of both of the displayed versions, and I can see them looking great with quite a few Rogue sets. There's a lot of diversity between the two versions that they showed, which is a solid indicator of how much visual variety we're going to be seeing with this expansion's weapons. Next up, we've got the Dreadblades, which are going to be the artifact weapon for the Outlaw. You may not have heard of the Outlaw. Basically, they are removing combat and adding in Outlaw as a new spec, which is more in tune with the theme of being a swashbuckling spec for the Rogues. Again, I think both models here look totally different, and that bodes very well for the overall diversity. I especially like the Dueling Sword, and I can foresee lots of great pirate mogs on the horizon. Both very solid offerings that I'm definitely happy with. And then for subtlety, we have the Fangs of the Devourer. These are the Fangs of Sir Garrus's personal hound forged into blades for his personal assassin. And despite that really badass lore, they're not blowing me away at all. Hopefully the variations are cool, but what we've seen here is uh, just a bit boring as far as I'm concerned. Next up, Shaman, starting off with Elemental and the Fist of Raden. This was gifted to the Highkeeper Ra by Amonthul, and it was then used to breathe life into the Mogu race. It was later recovered by Zhuan, who I assume will be giving it to us. I really like the look of this um, fist weapon and shield combination. We've only seen one variation, so there's hopefully more to come, but overall, I'm very impressed. And next, for enhancement, we're going to be using the Doomhammer. Yes, the bringer of Garrosh's doom will be bestowed to the shamans. You'll find the actual Doomhammer in your main hand and an elemental duplicate in the other. I think that feels very cool and very unique. Both versions that they've showed are also really nice looking, though I can see the lack of symmetry getting on some people's nerves. Enhancement shamans are already a very fast-paced flurry of colors, and I think these weapons are going to definitely add to that. Next up, we've got Restoration and the Scepter of Ashara. This um, shield and mace combination is pretty self-explanatory as far as the lore goes, and wow, the elegance of the blue variant has got me extremely, extremely impressed. It's beautiful looking, and it's got some wonderful animation work as well. I'm, I'm much less keen on the red variant, but again, we'll see what's uh, going on down the line. But I really am impressed with the blue version, as in it's one of my favorite artifact weapons yet. Next, we've got Warlocks, and Affliction are going to be using Ultalesh, the Dreadwind Harvester. This weapon was gifted to Satil by Sagaris, and Satil then used it to harvest the souls of those who lived in Deadwind Pass, before eventually being hunted down and killed by the Guardian of Tirisfall. As I said before in this video, scythes do a lot for me, and both versions of this look absolutely badass. I think they look brilliant, especially the red version. It's got this deep red channel running through the middle and a very cool looking skull. I actually think this is one of the best looking um, weapons overall, and certainly there are a few Warlock Mog sets which are going to perfectly complement its look. Next, we've got Demonology and the Skull of the Manari. This is a skull of an Eridor who attempted to seize more power than Archimonde was happy with. 
being a stand-up chap, Archimonde killed him and turned his skull into a weapon. Lovely stuff. And wow, what a unique weapon. I mean, this really is unlike anything we've seen before. I really hope they give this a lot of super unique animation stuff. I mean, imagine its mouth opening up and like spewing foul fire as a part of one of your spells. I know the demonology warlocks are worried about class changes, but I think their artifact is one of the coolest ones out of all of them. And then for destruction, we're going to be getting the Scepter of Sargaris. This is the staff the Ner'zhul used to open the portals that destroyed Outland. It was later recovered by the Kirintor, who locked it away for safekeeping. Until now, the visuals of this are just truly befitting of the name. Just wow, this thing is immensely impressive looking. Both variants are great, and they're going to go well with so many Warlock Mog sets. I really hope they find a way to allow Green Fire Warlocks to apply their effect to this weapon, because I can see that looking particularly brilliant. And finally, we have the Warrior. Starting off with arms on Stromkar the Warbreaker. This rather large sword was wielded by the Kings of Arathor, but was eventually then lost to time. Both variants look very cool, but I think we've seen the styles before with the orange one feeling particularly Warlords of Draenor-esque. Still, it is a big sword, Blizzard are good at doing big swords, and there are more variants to come. But as it stands, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Or Valiar, it, it depends, though those Norse folk have a way of saying things. These swords were forged by Odin after he killed Helia, or Helia, or Helja, whatever. Um, she then later stole the swords, infused them with her rage, oh my, and then gave them to a champion of her choosing to use to drag souls down to Helheim with her. Lovely stuff. And again, both variants feel like something that we've seen before. I mean, they're solid, but they're just not that interesting or really that groundbreaking. And the red version has me really underwhelmed. It just looks so plain and so dull. Very boring. I don't get how that actually got in. And the blue variant, though, it, it's cool because it's very reminiscent of the Might set, which I absolutely love, but I don't think it's going to work well with most Mog sets. Overall, I think the Warriors have got a really a pretty shit deal here. Just rather unfortunate. And basically, there we have it. A run over of all of the new variants that have been unveiled at um, Blizzard's Artifact Preview. Overall, I am quite happy, though there are a few duds. I've got to say, though, the Paladins and the Warlocks are absolutely coming out on top here with extremely impressive looking sets of weapons. Each weapon will have multiple variations, though, so there will be far more than we've seen here today. If something isn't tickling your fancy, then don't lose hope. Especially for the Warriors, I really hope your variants are cool. Anyway, that's been it for me. Stay tuned to the channel for more up-to-date BlizzCon coverage. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.